one man on fire with the minis. So yeah. Man on fire. Got crushed by a big, big platform that still had that still had not tested on. And now we're searching for the minis. I mean, how do we know about this? How do we know that his remains are even still... How do we know what his remains are? That's what I want to know. Do we have an inside man in this, uh... At this, uh, outpost? With the Russians? Maybe we do. But yeah, that's what we're doing right now. It's also good to come back here. It's also good to come back to this game. Turkey 6 was an overall complete completion? Are you serious? Um, I don't have anything... Anything... Here to listen to, or at least not anything new anyway. Anything that I do... How long is this clip? You mentioned that the man on fire was crushed under the whole lamp of the tank. Yeah, he was caught under the wheels of the transport platform. Mm -hmm. But his body wasn't found. What? We searched the area the moment we arrived, but there was no trace of him. I wasn't hallucinating. No, no, no. I trust you on that. That means someone must have taken the body. When I got there, everything was still as it was. Even the skull face hasn't been touched. I can't, I can't see your reason to sneak into a place, place like that and drag, drag out the biggest, biggest heaviest, heaviest guy, guy there. there. What are you what getting at? The only the option, option left is... is he, got he got up and walked, walked away. away. That platform ran, ran him over. Just ran, ran him over. You're saying that's not enough? enough? I don't, I don't want to believe it, but maybe not. He shrugs off bullets, even rocket strikes. There's no reason to think that would finish him. It seems ridiculous, but... I'll start gathering eyewitness accounts just in case. If you, you dig, dig up anything concrete, concrete, I want to know. You'll, you'll be, be the first, first if I dig I anything up. up. But I hope to hell I don't. No kidding. Alright, yeah. Um, and also, for anyone who is... Plant expansion complete. Oh, okay. I don't want to do this, game. Leave me alone. Alright, I couldn't care less. I guess, but it doesn't really matter to me because I don't, couldn't care less. No, I don't want to. <coughs> right. <coughs> Sorry. Right, let's get this mission now. Uh, if you're in there, or there, or there. I feel like then you hear probably be better off to me. Everything I want, uh, sack body. Why can't I pick quiet? Um, excuse me? I'm not forgetting what happened in the last episode. Is she gone? Is she still there? Why well, can't I can't select her? Okay. Well, if that's the case, then we're going to select D Dog. Yeah. Sneaking knife. Yes. He's only can wear anyway. Right. I don't know why I can't select quite. I don't know what what I don't remember what happened in the last episode. If she left or something. But that's. The, you know, that's what's happening now, apparently. Um, equipment is correct, yeah. Crystal, dynamic, uh, actually. Do I have anything else I can use? Um, secondary weapons. And the stun arm. It was a 1.9 mega volt. Mega volt electric shock. Capable of incapacitating enemies. Yeah, okay. It's so long since I played this. Good to come back. Oh, nice. It's so weird as well, though, because 
you know, playing Dying Light, you you want to go out during the day. Playing this game, you want to go out during the night, because you want to keep you want to keep stealth. Like. Also, there's no volatiles in this game, so it's grand to go out at night in this game. But yeah, it's good. It's good to finally come back to this. I haven't played in ages though. I haven't. I don't. Think, the last time I played it was when I finished on my channel. Well, finished it on my channel. All the missions now are just are just replays of older missions, but just made harder because the replays of the missions either now you can't because for now now they're just gonna they're just gonna reuse the missions that you did before, but they're gonna make it harder. Because some of them, you won't be able to use any weapons at all, and some of them, you, some of them, you, will just be, it'll just be made harder, and I don't know how or in what way. Goats there. I don't know what the fuck they were. <laughs> what they were people. Alright, let's go down. Well, okay, there, no, that's not the outpost. That, that, that's a outpost, but it's not the outpost. Um, what? Oh, there it is, that's the scope, okay. Shh, shh. Um, I'm trying to remember the buttons. Get that off you. Okay, X is a crouch. Okay. I've been, I've been playing too many games recently that had that had the that had it be circled, so I've been confused there. Right, so where is this? Um, okay, it's up here. So we need to go this way from down this road. The truck is just going on its way again. Okay, so, so L three is the sprint. I don't know why that animal did it. Yeah, it's just a sheep. Is it? Yeah, it's just a sheep. Yep, there's another sheep. Um. Uh, am I going down this road? Should I go down this road? Yeah, fuck why not. Also, it's dark there, so... Put this on. See where I'm going. Well, you know what? I can see... Oh, a plant. I thought it was a person. Oh god, no. Wrong button, snake. Get your car on. Petty dog. Alright, um... Yeah, I can, I can see clearly enough. It's not too bad, so I don't really need to wear the night vision goggles. I keep thinking here are trucks and stuff here driving behind me. If that happens... You know, it's just a fence. Everything I see in this game looks like a person to me you now. That shows that just shows how long I've been playing how long I haven't how long I've been to the table. No, I don't remember, was it last year or two years ago? Christ, so imagine to imagine I think it could have been two years ago. Right. Let's stay out of the light, D Dog. Oh, T Dog is growling. Avoid the lights. And definitely avoid his searchlight.
Okay, forgot that happens when you enter a mission area. Scared me, but I'm alright. Alright. Let's go around this way. Anything here for us, mate? Oh, yes, there is. Stop moving stuff around. They can actually hear stuff like that. Truck driving around. I don't know if they're driving to us or from us. Oh, it's up there. It's driving down towards us, actually. <coughs> Come on, buddy. Let's go get this man on fire. Well, I mean, he's not on fire anymore. He's very much extinguished. I remember the first time I, I played this. And there's like this mission. I'm trying to find him. Oh god, decoy soldier. Trying to trying to find the man. Of, I remember the first time I did this. Trying to find the man on fire. Like oh my god, it was so hard because I, I didn't know where it was, and it was just right in front of me the whole time. <coughs> I looked everywhere for his body, and it was just right in front of me the whole time. And I didn't even see it. I, I only, I only eventually, I had to, I actually had to look up a YouTube video that showed me where the body was for me to even get past it. Oh, There you go, buddy. I'm gonna shoot this light. Okay, then I guess I can't. Shit, that's not screen. Cover behind, I should say. How did you not hear that? Now we heard it. <laughs> come on, come search. I forgot the button to grab is. Shush. Alright, I'd really depend on. 
Yeah. Where the hell are you supposed to go here? That's what I'm looking for. Off mount. Hey, mate. I mean, I don't really need to get the information from him. I know where the body is. So I'll come check it out again. Oh, well, I'm stuck here. That's right, you don't see anything. I don't really see them actually. I'm gonna do my night vision. There's a lot of lights in this area. That's how we do it, R1. These guys just walk around, like there's nothing. He doesn't think he's at home. Yeah, so it was there the whole time in front of me last time I played this, and I just didn't see it. Again. Snake is a brave man to just stand there and let him come to him. He's not normal. Yep, there he is. <laughs> For anyone who has never played three, you know, like the younger 
younger generation of younger generation of these younger generation of Metal Gear Solid fans who may have only played five or may have played four Metal Gear Solid four and five. If you've never played three, or even even if you're an older fan who has never played three, or never got far enough into three, if you haven't if you have never played three, you will you will not know that this man is Volgan from three. Or even if you're a Metal Gear Solid Five fan who hasn't figured out, that is Volgan from um, Metal Gear Solid Three. Volgan? Volgan? What's his name? I think it's Volgan. But yeah, he's one. Of the, he's one of the main enemies from Three. That's the end of the Man of Fire. I mean, what happened to him after that? Because he's never in any other game. Volgan is never in any other game apart from 3. 3 happens before 5. And then 5 happens before every other game. What, did we bring him back into me? Oh, we did. Skullface used your thirst for revenge against Big Boss, did he? I'm gonna quarantine top on you. Did we? Ooh, some rewards. Development project has been added. Or one reward I should say. Not rewards. Oh, we do have more missions. Retake the... Mm. Cursed Legacy. Okay, this is actually a new mission. Uh, but yeah, like, these ones here are completely different. Um... Yeah, I'm just real okay, like like see here, right? Well it says at the bottom. So it says there number thirty three, um I don't know how to say that word, but C two W, that mission and whatever whatever that word next to it means the ultimate in solo infiltration, all weapons and items, OSP on site procurement, chicken hat, reflex mode, supply drops, body body deployment, support helicopter attacks and support strikes unavailable. So you can't use anything to that mission, or you know, apart from everything, anything you find on the field itself. So all weapons and items and on-site procurement, chicken hat, reflex mode, supply drops, body deployment, support helicopter attacks, and support strikes, all available. You basically can't use anything. And extreme is just a high level difficulty. So it just means you're doing the same mission again, but just at a harder, harder, harder level. Um, yeah. Um, so this one total stealth, com complete stealth required. Game over upon detection by enemy. So if you get attacked in that mission, you have to restart the mission again. You can't get spotted at all. And again, extreme, just a high level of difficulty. Um. But this one is new. This is this is not a mission we've done yet. You you'd know if it's a mission you've done already because it would have one of these words. You have extreme total stealth or that word in front of it. So this mission is new. It's one we haven't done yet. Um, recover. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know what this mission is. Recover because this is there. Recover the two containers loaded with Code Talker's research materials. The containers are hidden in the jungle. And XOF shoppers are in route to collect them. Also, I should probably should have said this at the start. You're wondering why I'm not streaming it? Because I knew this mission would be quick. So I decided to just do it here, then save the clip, and then upload it to YouTube. That's why I'm not doing it, but you stream this here because there's nothing in there for a stream. 
At least not, at least I didn't think there was going to be, but apparently there's more missions. Um, what other setups do I have? No, no, none that's really, nothing that's really important. This one we haven't done before though, extra, well, we have in other places. Extract a highly skilled soldier. Um, anything else? Nothing else. Do we have anything in Africa? Prisoner Extraction 14, Capture Legendary Ibis. Uh, I believe an Ibis is like a crane or something, or a canary. No, I think it's a canary. I think it's a crane. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think an Ibis is a crane, so there you go. Um, capture the Legendary Jackal. I mean, I assume everyone knows what a Jackal is. Um, but for those of you who don't know... I guess the jackals, a jackal is probably closest related to a hyena, if you know what a hyena is, it's just, they don't make the same sounds, as a, to my knowledge, they don't make the same sounds as a, hy as a hyena, but I think if you look at a jackal, that's probably what they are closest related to, a hyena. Um, oh, extract one of your murder soldier, you know, I've done them before. Okay. Like this, this game just loves reusing missions. Right, since we're here and we have these, we listen to these now because I'm gonna listen to these and then we'll um, uh, and this then I'll clip this and we'll send it into YouTube. Volgan, the group colonel, there you go. Volgan. Volgan's body was taken to a research institute in the outskirts of Moscow. But modern medicine couldn't explain why he was still alive. Not that the colonel was any ordinary man to begin with. That constant electric current he had running through his body that he could unleash his will. To be honest, I was always uncomfortable around him. Thought I might get electrocuted just by standing nearby. The Institute studying him was tasked with investigating and developing human paranormal abilities. The comatose Volgan was used to further the Soviet Union's research into such abilities. But not long ago, the facility burned to the ground. And Volgan's body was never found among the rubble, even though the fire started in the room where they were keeping him. This occurred at around the same time you woke up. If Skullface was right, and a thirst for revenge can turn a man into a demon and keep the dead alive, and this man on fire has been coming after us ever since you woke up, well, that just might be what's left of our old friend Volgan. It's not over yet. Back in 64, in Selenyarsk, you brought his plans for a utopia down in flames. That grudge is what's keeping him alive. The day the research facility holding Volgan burned down, a Soviet jumbo passenger jet happened to crash nearby, far away to the north of that hospital in Cyprus. On board the plane was a young boy who was being studied in the same facility. The plane fell to earth from over 8,000 feet, but the boy's body was the only one not recovered. At almost exactly the same time as the crash, Volgan awoke in that facility. According to the Research Institute's documents, the gifts this boy demonstrated included psychokinesis and telepathy. To protect his mind from being inundated with other people's thoughts, he always wore a kind of gas mask. A rudimentary form of psychic insulation, apparently. We don't know where this boy is, but if skull face is connected to him, we may cross paths with him yet. This boy is part of a new age where nothing we understand about the world makes sense anymore. Don't let your guard down. So that character Tom with there is the character that we normally see floating around either Sahelanthropus or we've seen we've seen him around Skullface a few times. We've seen him mostly around the man on fire. Uh so yeah, that's who that's what they're talking about there. So okay, he was also being uh, also a stu a person being stuck. I, I don't know was it just I didn't know was it just like a figment of a figment of um, Snake's imagination that he was just seeing someone there. I can't believe that story behind him even when I first played through this. So what were they doing in Zoya 
we had the deal with that facility with all the people laid out in rows. The abandoned factory Shibani was held in. It is precisely as you guessed. Black Anna was coding languages into the vocal cord parasites. They infected the subjects with the parasites. Then they made an incision in the throat to expose the vocal cords. That allowed them to play recordings of the desired language directly to the parasites. And the parasites learn the languages that way. That's some teaching method. I just don't get how a bunch of bugs had the brain power for it. They don't. Do not judge them by human standards. They do not learn as a function of intellect. Then how do they do it? What language the parasites react to is coded into their genes. You could expose the Japanese strain to English for years, and it would never learn the language and react to it. The pronunciation, rhythm, and structure are different. But what about, say, Spanish and then Portuguese? Linguistically, the two are very close. Yeah, they're both Ibero Romance languages. Even so, a Spanish language mating pair exposed to Portuguese will not copulate. Only when they hear Spanish. Only then. And the majority of their offspring will be the same. So it's a little case of a mother tongue. But if that's so, I don't see how the different strains can be created in the first place. Well. Among the many thousands of offspring, there may be just a few that react to Portuguese. You're talking about mutations. Correct. Play the tapes helps to identify the mutant strains. Those specimens are then isolated and bred with one another. From their children, specimens that react most strongly to Portuguese can again be selected and bred. Repeating this process creates the strain that reacts only to Portuguese and never to Spanish. Mutation and selection. No different to breeding roses. So you kept increasing the change over the generations, adapting them to languages from all over the world. It must have taken a hell of a lot of patience. More like patience. Just how many died for this? There's something I still don't get. In order to tell which larvae will react to Portuguese, you'd have to let them develop and then see which copulate. That means you need tens of thousands of guinea pigs. There's no way you could do that in a facility that small. For normal, selective breeding methods, you would be right. But there is a more effective selection method when training the vocal cord parasites. Go on. It is not only when mating that the parasites listen for language shortly before hatching. Larvae display markedly increased activity in reaction to a particular language. The active egg can be identified under a black light. So the egg that reacts to Portuguese are selectively placed in the throats of the subjects. So you see. Narrowing down strains that react to the target language is an effective process. Though I'm sure that even so, many lost their lives to create the various strains. Take a kick it up well into that. There are two reasons for playing the tapes for the parasites. One, to isolate the egg that responds to the target language. And two, to cause the specimens raised from the selected eggs to mate. I get how the system works. But why do they respond to language before they even hatch? It's not like they can mate from inside an egg. It is because the larvae learn the language before hatching. You mentioned that what language the parasites respond to is hard-coded into their genes, and that they don't have the brain power to actually learn a language. But then you say that the larvae in Zoya Badia Buru were learning the languages in the egg. Your story doesn't add up. Your country is home to a unique songbird. The Japanese bush warbler. Sure, what out of it? What a beautiful 
Paul it has. But no bushwhacker can think it perfectly at the start. As chicks, they can barely chirp at all. They must learn from their parents and other adult birds. Only then can they sing them properly and attract females. So naturally, there are individual differences in each bird's call. Though they start on the same footing, each bird is influenced by its teachers. And the parasites are the same? Like the birds, the parasites have a genetic predisposition towards a particular language. But while in the air, the larvae's ears are tweaked by listening to the voice of the host. This tweaking ensures that the grown parasites will react better to the host. Why would they have an ability like that? Well, there are distinct regional differences within even the same language. Rare is the language that has no unique dialects. Yes, learning the whole speech pattern before hatching attunes the larvae to whatever twist the pronunciation it will encounter. This adaptive ability is what makes them so formidable. I see. So a language requires selective breeding, but the parasites can learn dialects by themselves. Of course, having the egg stage larvae listen to the tapes in the factory was not meant to teach them. It was more important to use that trait of theirs to identify the mutated strains. As I mentioned earlier, is that really accurate enough to use as a weapon? You could wipe out a neighboring ethnic group by accident if the pronunciation is too close. What you say is true. In that sense, they are imperfect as ethnic cleansers. But for his purposes, they are good enough. His objective was not to exterminate any one ethnic group, but to render the world's lingua franca, English, inert. Interesting. Okay, and oh, we just had the we just had the four, yeah. So we don't have any more. I got another award. Oh, listen to achieve an Intel tapes play played rate of sixty percent. Okay, so that means I've listened to sixty percent of all tapes. Right, I'm gonna clip this and then well, not clip, but I'm gonna save the, I'm gonna save what I've done here and now and then 